But tell me, how was the Fair of the Hearts? It was terrible. <laughs> so did it. They had three buildings. Normally they have at least five to six buildings. We're talking about a kind of a flea market thing here in Oklahoma City. Not really a flea market. Well, no, it's... Charge it, charge you money to go in and buy yeah, stuff. Yeah, they charged you the yeah. same amount of money when they had yeah. six buildings, and they only had yeah. half of that, three buildings. Carlos Perez. So this is for people that care more about money than pets. Oh dear. Well, it's not uh, not got, everybody. Well, I mean, this is about people who care about pets who also want to make money. I think you got it the wrong way around. Yeah. So you can you can absolutely care about pets and also make money. You don't have to differentiate the two. The important thing is, is that you do things the right way. We're not telling people what to do to make money. We're telling people what to do to have successful litters and not get into trouble. So you're trying missing to a help people. Yeah, we're trying to help people. I think you're missing a point, Mr. Perez. Yes. But anyway, you still have their own opinion. We're trying to help people that don't yeah. have a clue what's going There's on. There's plenty of people out there who need some help. Yes. Uh, so Susan Brocksmith says, I think we're talking about what can bring milk in. She's talking about fenugreek. Oxymama, calcium, oxytocin shots, and yes, supplement with formula. We've got all good points there. What is the price of a C-section in the U.S.? And people oh, it's have all everywhere. people have sounded off about this. Let's see what. Uh, um, okay, so Susan Brocksmith says four hundred to two thousand. Uh, Alyssa Ames says uh, she paid three thousand in Connecticut. Up north, it's even more expensive. Where was it that guy took his for emergency and ended up losing? New York, 6,000 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, listen to this one. Well, okay, I'm going to sound off on what the price are right here. So in Oklahoma, the low end's 350 and the high end's probably 1200 That, I mean, it might be a bit well, more than that. Well, if it's an emergency call, it's 18 could, to 19 Could be. I mean, I, we never paid that, but I mean, it certainly could be. We pay 1200 for emergency. Other parts of the country, typically, that's rural America, and it tends to be less expensive. So one of the things I'd say to everybody who's got these very expensive prices would be do some shopping around. For instance, if we go to Texas, to uh, actually Wheeler, Texas, it's 325 bucks. You get two vets for the price of one for that kind of money. If you shop around for your small farm vets. If you're in upstate New York town. and you look around, you could probably find it very oh, expensive yeah. and probably a third of the price too. And here's the thing that yep. you need. What do they need if they're gonna do that? Hmm? An incubator. Oh yeah, yeah. A portable incubator. Because well, you yeah. can go, folks, you can go, you know, Half a day away, spend the night in a motel, go get your C section done, come home with the puppies in our portable incubator. Yeah, yeah. Um, but prices are all over the place, that's It'll for still sure. Be cheaper than yeah. what you pay in the big city. Yeah. So, some at Kimbrook says, so you need a separate oxygen concentrator for the travel incubator. Well, the problem you're going to have with a uh, no, you don't. But any time that you have an incubator, if you're going to travel with it, it needs to either run off an inversion in your car, or you need to have one that runs off 12 volts as well. And uh, there aren't very many that run off 12 volts. There's not any that I've seen that are worth a flip. Um, and, and so typically, yeah, so there's the answer on that one. Um, so, uh, Siran O'Reilly, hey, lovely videos. I'm in Ireland, unfortunately, can't buy your whopping crate. Yes, you can. Um, so, so the what answer makes is. Think you can't. I don't know. We ship our products work on 110 and 240 volts. We, mm. we give you you depending on where you buy it from. We give you the correct adapter to make it fit into your outlets wherever it's that world, might be. It's world. Yeah, wide. we ship we ship all over the world yeah. uh, every day. Ship all over the world. So yeah, absolutely, you can buy a product. Mm -hmm. Rod Fam, where can I go to see your available pups? I go on your website, but it's not updated. You're right. I need to update it. Sorry about that. Oh, there's Froz. some on my um, Facebook. Uh, love love my pups. I've got some videos on there and then on Facebook. I have videos on there Well, so, not love my pups.com because I haven't updated that in a while. Oh, I, need, I need to do okay. that I need, but I need love to do my that. pups on Facebook. Ah, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But uh, we got YouTube videos. There's links from our websites to go right there to it so you know if you're looking for an puppy go there if you're looking for a puppy call me yeah call me. 580 799 1910 Michael where do I post my questions to have them answered I love these yeah, ones right, right here, here. <laughs> right here right there you, it is yeah. right where you ask the question that's yeah. what you that's what you well, so ask us the question you want answered so we answer one of your questions we'll answer the next one. Oh, I'm a turd sorry um, Josh 
Valentine with an F, not Valentine with a V. If it was Valentine with a V, then we'd wish you a happy Valentine's Day, but it's Valentine. Fallen time, excuse me, fallen time. How many tests do you do on average through a heat cycle and, then and again to time the C-section? That's a good question. So, not been asked that one before. So, um, lots of people go to the vet that if you see first, find first signs of blood. Waste of money. Won't get any useful information out of that one. You've got to be six days into this before you're going to get anything that's remotely meaningful on a progesterone test. So save your money. If you know when they saw the first blood and she's still got nice red blood, it's not pink, wait day six, day seven. If you're in a situation where a dog has got very, very, all of a sudden it goes very light on you, then you would, might go right, you might go at that point. But I've never bred a dog at day six, ever. Um, and I've bred some dogs at day 30, but most dogs are bred between day 11 and 13. So first test at day six, that's gonna give you a pretty good idea about what's going on, and you're gonna need one more test for sure, and maybe two. So two to three. Now at the other end, for the C-section, the time of C-section, there's no point going and get, first off, take your AI date, roll that forward 61 days, that's your potential C-section date, start taking the temperature about five days to a week before that date and watch the temperature coming down and if you see this nice progression in temperature don't worry about doing a c-section until the temperature is getting down close to 99 or you are really close to the, you know, within a day of the c-section time because the problem with a with a progesterone test is people are constantly calling me up and say hey she's at a five when will she be due can't can't tell you all I can tell you is one thing and one thing only. If the, if the level's three or less, you're good to take puppies. That's it. And, yeah, and if your vet tells you, well, she's at day 60, we're going to take puppies at this day. No. Nope. Do not do that. Nope. We just got a customer, not our customer, but, well, he called us for information. Didn't take it. Trent M. Uh, question about tails. I see you discuss a lot about cleft palates and not breed to the same stud if it happens. If it happens again, it's probably your female, correct? Yeah, um, that's right. Having a full length straight tail, not even a kink in them. Oh, all of the other litter had, oh, she's got a dog with a kinky tail, I think. I don't get too worried about kinky tails. I mean, some people get really upset about tails that are corkscrew tails. I really don't. You hear this thing about, oh, it's got a corkscrew tail, it's probably in the spine. I don't believe a word of it. I mean, Look at the dog's spine. The spine's just as straight as can be, and it's got a kink on the end of it. It's just, I just don't think it's, look, it's not, you don't want to have a curly tail, and you certainly don't want to have a long tail, and you don't want to have no tail at all. We'd like to have that little short tail that's about that much sticking out of the dog, if you can see that with the sunlight on it. That's what you'd like to have. But I don't get too awfully worried about tails, personally. Um, other people, differently. But I mean, if you don't like the tails you're getting, um, breed back to a different stud next time and see if that's what's causing the problem because it's probably a combination of two dogs or it may just be one of those things but I'd, I wouldn't get too there's a lot of other things I'm a lot more concerned about what about you Tabby the tails I mean, don't get me wrong I don't want to see three inch long tails that's just no. don't want to see that yeah. that, that breeding needs to not happen again right. um, but if you get a little corkscrew tail in one puppy uh, it's, you know there are worse things yeah. like severe underbite overbite long ears long necks Long, long backs, nose. long noses, a lot more concern to me. Yeah. And no dog is perfect, there are no tens. Someone's talking about Kiki, says Kiki's so gorgeous, he is a very oh, good dog, yeah. Can you, Ellie Holloway, can you please do a video on LLCing your breeding program? We're talking about a business with an LLC. I mean, I'm not a lawyer, so I really can't comment too much about this. The, the reason to do an LLC is what's called a limited liability corporation. It's very easy to set one up. And what it does is it protects you in the event that somebody comes back and sues you, whether you're limited to the, li the liability is limited to the company and the assets of the company. So the problem gets to be is if something goes badly wrong and somebody comes back and sues you in an LLC, they can come after everything that you own. That, that's why you have an LLC. And I'm not going to get into details whether that's good, fair, or indifferent. It's just that's the way that it is. But my recommendation would be is if you're going to do very much about of this, that you do uh, in, invest the money to set up an LLC. Now, there's things you've got to do with an LLC in terms of how the money is taken in. 
how you've got to do reporting. There's quite a bit of paperwork that goes along with becoming an LLC. But uh, anyway, there we go on that. Answer this one, Angelo Nodal. So Big B, Little B, Big D, Little D makes an Isabella. Correct. Yes, those are the ingredients for an Isabella. Correct. So an Isabella would be a dog that would be Little B, Little B, Little D, Little D. So you've got a dog that can make Isabellas. Not very many of them. If you put that dog with an Isabella, one quarter of the litter would be Isabellas. <laughs> Happy Valentine's, my sweetheart. Happy Valentine's, baby, and everybody out there. Let's make it like we love each other, okay, yeah. on this video, right? Mm. <laughs> hey, to all of you guys out there, have a great Valentine's Day. And and kiss your dogs too, right? Oh, all right, yeah. so here we go. Cra babies. Crappy Limit TV, show more of the dogs. Isn't this a dog show? The show we do a lot of, it's not a dog show. It's not a dog show, no. no. it's not. Not a dog show, no, nope, not a dog show. Not a dog show. No dog show. Well, other than that's two dogs. I mean, I'm the dog, and here's the here's the beautiful one. But not a dog show. Oh. So, uh, so um, we don't show more dogs. We want to just uh, help you with your uh, with your questions about uh, what you need to be doing or not doing, or you know, tell us what you're doing and pass that along to other people. All right, so we go. Uh, Susan Brocksmith, AKC will eventually add colours. So we what she's talking about here is is this this rubbish. Well, I say rubbish. There's this movement going on that's that's driven by right now Scandinavia, Australia, and Peter about restricting our our ability to breed dogs that we want. That that's and I'm going to do a whole video on that. So that's another thing. Um, all right. Uh, if you have a mum for this is Trent M. If you have a mum Frenchie giving you litter that has full length tails, I'm not sure what full length tails means, but it scares me rather than that. With no kinks, mum is from a fluffy lion and so is dad. Mum did not carry the gene, however. I will be okay. breeding her. So they're fluffy kinks. You'll be breeding to another. Yes, so she, he, I think this is a follow up from a previous question. So they said they're going to be breeding to another male. Yeah, I would do that. You don't want long tailed dogs. I mean, dog, tails are like this. This is crazy, this is. You, know, yeah. you want tails that are you know, you half an inch. Right, well, yep, right. Yeah. Uh, Susan Brocksmith, I talked yesterday about dogs with mastitis. I'd heard that people were using cabbage leaves, and I said I didn't believe that it was probably going to be much use. Susan Brocksmith said, yep, cabbage leaves didn't work for me uh, on Danes in the past. We yeah, well, I, 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 yeah, we haven't tried it, but uh, James is looking dapper today. Thank you. Well, that was yesterday when I had a suit on. Oh, you had your jacket on. Yep. Yeah. He does clean up every once in a while. Yeah. He is English, you know. <laughs> James, so Amy, I did hear you <laughs> cleaning up once in a while. Uh, I got a pretty raggedy hair today, so we're we'll trying to beautify myself, but it's going to be a waste of time. You get what you get. That's it. You can only do so much with a. What's that? You can't make a. You can't make a silk purse out of a. You can't make a silk purse on the sow's ear. I'm the sow's ear. James, why shouldn't a healthy mower on new shade Isabella Fluffy Pink, etc., with confirmation be shown in the ring? Variety is the spice of life. Let's see what the comments are on this. As uh, so Susan Brocksmith said, it just takes a while for the agency to allow more colors. Uh, we talked about this in length in the last video, so I don't spend a lot of time on this. It's their club, it's their get rules, their rules, their game. You know, it's like everything else. If you don't like their rules, you go to a different club. I don't like their rules, but I still like the AKC because I, I do think that it is a value to be able to have do dogs that have parentage that show they are purebred as opposed to bringing in other stuff. So uh, I think that, um, and, and I mean, I don't want to knock the AKC because I mean, generally whenever we deal with the AKC, they're reputable, nice, honest people and whenever we actually meet them in person, they do things like kennel inspections. We like meeting oh, with them. they're fantastic. They're really good people. Every single one, we've had like three or four different people. And I think they're just mainly talking about the AKC show. They are, they are. Not the AKC. But, but, yes, but, but I didn't want to bash the AKC in, in acting like, because there's people out there saying, oh, I hate the AKC. I don't hate the AKC at all. 
But it is their club, it is their rules, and you either pl apply with their rules or you go somewhere else. It's as simple as that. There's other ways to go if you don't like the AKZ. It's kind of um, like you take your toys and go home. Uh, JF, I'm surprised about the amount of colour questions you get. Baki and Colour My Frenchie are two great apps to use. Um, yeah, you're exactly right. I mean, so I think part of this JF is, is it's easy for them to ask a question as opposed to doing the homework. And ultimately, you need to understand the genetics and you shouldn't even need back here or the, or the color my French is because you understand what's going on. And so I'm, I'm a firm believer in everything. I'm kind of, a, kind of a bit of a nerdy scientist type that you learn things from first principles and it all makes sense. Otherwise, you start taking what other people say that is sometimes incorrect and running with it. And just like running with scissors, you can get hurt. So here's the next one. Hey James and Tammy, I'm having my first house litter. Any advice to have a successful litter? I'll read the reply afterwards, but I'm gonna let Tammy answer that one. What should you do, Tammy, to have a successful first litter? Need a traveling incubator kit. You need a heated whelping system. You need a puppy care kit that has two feeders, you know, everything that you need in that. You know, the goat's milk, the bottle even that's in there. Um, you need to make sure that mama's been taking her um, prenatal vitamins. Yeah, her vitamins and then the folic, folic acid, acid. Right. Um, and make sure she's eating a good peppy food for extra calcium. And more protein. More protein. Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then you didn't add the oxygen concentrator in there, it was nice oh, and yeah. have. But and, I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. give you a response. This is actually from Susan and All Bosco's. those products I mentioned are on www.mybreedersupply.com. So here's the response, prepare, buy all of their products. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. And don't wait a week before you have your babies and then go, oh my gosh, no, no, no. I need all this stuff. No, Get well, it. one of the things, if you start ordering things from us overnight, it's expensive. Oh, and yeah, if you order it, yeah. if you order it where you don't You've need it for it a week, it's, it's a ten dollar fixed yeah. shipping fee. But uh, you know, I hate to make these things that are kind of a, a, a just trying to sell our products because it's not really what these videos are about. But she asked, but she asked, and somebody responded exactly what they said. Be and that is, be prepared. Be prepared. Is, do the things the that you're, yeah, Joan Garcia. Do the things that you're doing now. Ask questions and be prepared. The problem, like everything, is is if you're not prepared, you get caught with your pants down, and that's not a good place to be. Hey, we know we've been there. Amber Davis, hello. What if my dog is nesting a little bit but temperature hasn't dropped and at day 59 temperature is 100.6? Go get a progesterone test done. That's the only thing that you can do to reliably know what's going on in this situation. If you're getting mixed signals, temperature's not gone down, which is nesting, and you're not sure what's going on, get a progesterone test done. Less than three, safe to take puppies. Anything else, nobody knows. Luis Alvarez, have you ever encountered having a litter born with canine herpes? And if so, what was the outcome? Could you have done anything to test the parents beforehand? So, I have done videos on what's called CHV1, canine herpes. And um, there are things that you can do ahead of time. It's called a titer test to find out if a dog has canine herpes. You have to do it more than once because they have to be in the infectious point before it will show up on a test. I'm not going to go into some great detail here, but the answer to this is you need an incubator, you need to keep a temperature above 105, 105 or higher, and, and that reduces the, uh, the ability for the virus to replicate. There is no, there are some um, um, vaccines available now in Europe for this, but they've not been approved for America mm -hmm. yet. So maybe you can get those from Canada, I don't know. Allison, I have four puppies, eight days old. I've been weighing them every day and notice that one is falling behind in weight, still gaining about 0.4 to 0.5 ounce a day. Today he weighed at 12.9 and now there's already over a pound. When should I be concerned? So good for you, Allison. You've been weighing your puppies. That's the right thing to do. So you are Wait, aware. The day you get them home from the vet. What we do. After they're yep. born. And so, you know, specifically what Alison's talking about here 
is I'm just going to end up with this video. It's going to be the last part of this video. But the thing that Alison's talking about here is exactly she's on she's on the right track. Yeah. So so what typically a lot of people do is they wait till they've got a problem and the puppy's almost dying and then they start going to the vet. But you're a little late on it. So Alison's get ahead of the curve. She knows she has a puppy that for some reason is not gaining at the same rate as the others. Now, is that a problem? Maybe. What can you do about it? Careful attention to what's going on with that puppy. If that puppy is gaining heart 0.4 to 0.5 a day, not too concerned about it. When a puppy is not gaining any weight or just a small amount, 0.1 or 0.2 ounces, then I get, and the rest are growing, then I get very concerned about it. So, what do you do in those situations? I don't remember how all these puppies are now. I said, we look, let me look back at it again because that's relevant to this whole conversation. Eight days old. It is. So, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about what can go wrong with eight day old puppies or puppies that are a little older. So, normally you get to eight days and you start worrying less, don't we? Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you got to the point where everybody's nursing on mum, mum's doing a good job, her milk's come in. You know, you're, you're on the long stretch towards having a healthy litter of puppies. So, I, I wouldn't get overly concerned. But at the same time, you know, puppies can have problems. And a big thing that I see is uh, milk inhalation, and, you, and that develops into pneumonia, that the puppy then stops nursing, and the puppy goes downhill very, very quickly. So pay attention. If you've got a stethoscope, listen to that puppy's. If you don't have a stethoscope, go get one. If you can't find one, go order our puppy care kit, because our $99 puppy care kit includes a stethoscope. But you can buy them at Walmart. I think I've seen them in there for 20 bucks. I think you can buy a stethoscope at Walmart. But start listening to your puppies. Listen to all of them and see if there's any comparison between one puppy and another. What you're listening for is a rattly, rattly breath is something that's of concern. And if you just do that right after they've been eating, that's not the time to do it. Wait half an hour, an hour after they've eaten it, then listen to a puppy's lungs. And you will get the, you will become an expert fairly quickly where you can listen to your other puppies and make a comparison between the other puppies and this puppy. If that puppy has a kind of a ras raspy, rattly sound, then that is the signs that maybe you've got pneumonia present. And the other sign of pneumonia present is? The runny nose. The runny nose. And it doesn't have to be colored runny nose. Doesn't have it to be, be clear. It doesn't have to be green or yellow, it can, yeah. be, it can be clear. That's first, just the first beginnings. That's right, first because beginnings. Because if you start seeing color, you let it go too long. And what do you do about that? Uh, you um, get them some clavamox. That's right, you get them on clavamox. Right. Amoxicillin right. or clavamox, you get them on that. You have to go to your vet to get that. Well, how old was that one puppy that that woman called about? Eight weeks old? Oh, we sold. Uh, yeah. So, at eight weeks old, you can literally, you know, if they're congested, you can turn them on their... And, pat them on their back, kind of hold them at a tilted angle, and not pat, but not too hard, but... That was a call last night, like where that. this one was really very upset. Yeah, and well, that'll, that'll knock some of the mucus out, and you can either suck it out, or to help break it up. So what Tommy talking about is percussion therapy, yeah. where you take the puppy's head, and you, pilt, you put it on your, on your, over your knee, so it's not head... The head. But so the head is tilting body. down. You, yeah. want, you want the head here and the tail here. At an angle at least like this. Yeah. So the idea behind this is, is that you start wrapping on its back or on its chest and you want to break up any mucus in its lungs and then you can then get a suction bulb and suction that out of their nose. So the idea behind this is, is that any, you know, the problem with pneumonia is it gets in the lungs and the alveola, the little sacs in the lungs, get filled up with some mucus and fluid, and then they don't have the ability to be able to, uh, well, know where we're going? No, this far. Oh, don't have the ability to be able to uh, get as much oxygen, and they get in trouble. So the idea behind this is to try to break that up by patting on their back and get some of that mucus out and get antibiotics on board. And if they get in bad shape, they stop nursing, what do you do then? Two feet. Yes. Tube feed, get them in an incubator, get them with oxygen. And that can make the absolute difference. With, with If you get a puppy that's really in trouble, hopefully you got there soon enough that you don't get in big trouble. But if you, you do need an incubator, you do need oxygen, you do need antibiotics. And those things, typically you can turn a puppy around. Without those things, you can get in trouble in a hurry. There's 40 minutes. See, goodbye. Bye, Tammy. Happy Valentine's. Bye. Happy Valentine's. Bye. Thanks for watching the...
the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.